So this is the first time that uh, Forges Mere students have done a living essay. The question they're going to answer is, how far did Stressman succeed in solving the problems facing the Weimar Republic? A number of areas were affected by Stressman's policies. These included the economy, culture, politics and foreign policies. There were a number of problems that were present when Stressman entered the office, such as the rural crisis, hyperinflation and the Munich Putsch. Stressman had to deal with getting the French to leave the rural, reducing hyperinflation and dealing with the preventing Putschers. To do this, Stressman decided to peacefully persuade the French to leave by promising to pay reparations. He introduced a new currency and he put the leader of a Munich Putsch in prison. In 1922, the French invaded the Ruhr and took over the iron factories, coal mines and railways. The Ruhr was Germany's most valuable industrial area. Germany had stopped paying back reparations to France, which led to the invasion of the Ruhr. As a result, as a result of the invasion, the Weimar, Weimar government <laughs> ordered the workers in the Ruhr to go on strike. They thought that if Germany wasn't producing anything, then there would be nothing for the French to take. There were disastrous consequences for Germany, as since they weren't producing any goods, they didn't have any money. Germany then... They had no goods to trade. The Weimar government simply printed money for the government. This seemed an attractive solution. It paid off its debts in worthless marks, including war loans over 22 million. Inflation meant that the value of money went down as prices went up. Prices rose so fast that in 1923, that 1923 became a year of hyperinflation. So Stressman decided to replace the old money because of the trouble with hyperinflation and replaced it with a new currency called Renton Mark. One Renton Mark replaced 1,000 1, billion marks. Old notes were taken and gathered all together to be burnt. The new currency was quickly accepted by the government, the, by the German people, and inflation was brought under control. However, the German people never forgot hyperinflation. People who had lost their savings were not compensated. They felt cheated, and they blamed the Weimar Republic. On the 8th of November, 3,000 officials were meeting in a beer hall when Hitler stormed in, jumped on the table, and fired his gun twice to get everyone's attention. He then announced that the Munich Putsch was taking place. He then took off Gustav von Kahr, Otto von Losso and Hans von Losso. He said that he had three bullets for them and one for himself and that they should join his party. Stressman's solution was to put Hitler and the Nazis at the time in prison. However, this didn't quite go to plan as there were many Nazi sympathisers. Also, Hitler's trial backfired in Stressman's face because Hitler used this to express his ideas and what he thought the government should believe. In Germany between 1924 and 1929, German industry was recovering from post-war depression. The USA was pouring money into the German economy. Big businesses boomed, big landowners and the workers benefited, which led to improved paying conditions for most. However, peasant farmers and sections of the middle class lost out while the economy regained its value. In peacetime, farmers are found themselves overproducing, so could not sell enough produce to earn a healthy income. Small businesses felt threatened by the latest thriving department stores owned by Jews, so they hated Weimar and Jews. <laughs> the culture in Germany was flourishing, especially in Berlin. There were lots of new paintings and the famous Bauhaus style of architecture developed. The cinemas in Germany went through a golden age. Marlene Dietrich was was one of Germany's greatest ever international stars. Germany was beginning to get over the censorship that was placed by the Kaiser. However, not everyone was happy about the new style of entertainment. They thought it was immoral and made worse by American immigrants and Jewish artists. Foreign policy. Foreign policy was one of the most positive legacies of Stressman. In 1925, he signed the Locar no treaties guaranteeing that Germany's western borders with France and Belgium would not be changed. As a result of this, in 1926 Germany was accepted into the League of Nations. This was where Stressman tried to reverse some of the terms of the Treaty of Versailles and in 1929 the Young Plan was implemented which reduced the amount of reparation payments.
However, one of the many problems that Strassman faced was an attack from the Nationalists from joining the League of Nations <laughs> and for signing the Locarno Pact. They saw this as an acceptance of the Treaty of Versailles. There was also an attack on Locarno by the Communists as they demand this a conspiracy against the USSR. When Strassman became Chancellor of Germany in August 1923, the country was in a dire state. Reparations and hyperinflation were crippling the economy. Germany had few allies in the world and political opponents of the Weimar were beginning to gain support. The economy was improving, but not everyone was happy and Germany's economy was also completely dependent on America. Germany's culture was booming, but many conservative Germans disapproved of the, of the country's new liberal culture. In politics, Stressman was very successful. The Weimar Republic was stable, there were no attempts to overthrow the government and the Nazis had very little support. Finally, German was be Germany was becoming a world power. Stressman joined the League of Nations, where he managed to lighten Germany's reparations. However, many Germans saw, saw Stressman as weak for signing the Locarno Treaties. It is clear that, although Stressman made things better on the surface, Germany still had very deep problems that weren't being resolved.